Hi everybody, this is your first video uh, for chapter 16 dealing with uh, Charles Darwin and natural selection. Uh, this video is going to be about 16.1 and I just want to let you guys know ahead of time that I will be covering uh, the topics on the target sheet uh, but I will also be covering additional information that is all related to that and that you guys are going to be responsible for knowing. Um, if you've read the chapter this should just be a quick review uh, for those of you that have done that if you haven't read the chapter make sure that you do uh, and before the test if you have the opportunity to uh, review this video and any of the other videos that I put together for chapter 16 uh, I highly recommend that. All right what was Darwin's contribution to science? Well, if you go by the definition from the book, Darwin developed the scientific theory of biological evolution that explains how modern organisms evolved over long periods of time through the descent of common ancestors. You'll hear that expression a lot or you'll read a lot about it uh, because that's what Darwin, that's the terminology that Darwin used. But most people commonly refer to this as natural selection. All right, here you see a map of Darwin's voyage, which took them about five years to complete. Now, it was only supposed to take them two, maybe three years, uh, and they left from England and they sailed uh, down to South America and they bounced around a little bit on the east coast of South America, traveling back and forth, collecting specimens, uh, while the ship's captain was mapping the shoreline. Uh, and then you'll see, even see here at the southern tip of uh, South America, Charles Darwin's voyage actually, actually took him across land while the ship continued to sail around and picked him up on the other coast. Uh, from there they sailed up the west coast of South America, eventually making their way uh, to the islands of the Galapagos, where Darwin picked up a lot of his samples, and he noticed some very peculiar things about some of the animals there that uh, he sort of pontificated on as he continued on his voyage going towards uh, New Zealand uh, and Australia, through the Indian Ocean, back to South America, uh, before eventually making his way back to England, which of course we know took him five years. Now, while Darwin was on this voyage, and he was noticing these peculiar things about different organisms, he did start to notice some patterns, some patterns in the biodiversity. So what exactly were these? There are three of them that we're going to go over right here. The first thing that Darwin noticed was that different yet ecologically similar animal species inhabited separate but ecologically similar habitats around the globe. Now what exactly does that mean? Well, in short, this means that he noticed species vary globally. Okay, so here's one example of what that means. While Darwin was collecting specimens in South America, one of the birds that he noticed was a large flightless bird called a rhea. It didn't take him long, as I'm sure it doesn't take you very long, to notice that there is a similarity between the rheas of South America and an ostrich of Africa. And then, when Darwin got to Australia, he noticed that there was also a large flightless bird in Australia known as the emu. And then he also had knowledge of the roadrunner of North America, which is not a large flightless bird, uh, but it is a mostly flightless bird from North America. Most of you are familiar with it uh, here in the United States. And Darwin wondered, why would we have all of these similar flightless birds that were living on different continents. What is it that makes them similar and why 
do they exist on different continents, being the fact that they are completely different birds, yet very similar. Now, Darwin didn't just notice that there were similar, unrelated animals on different continents. He also noticed that they didn't have some of the same uh, animals that he was familiar with back in England, like the rabbit or the hedgehog. And then he also noticed that other continents had very peculiar-looking animals that he didn't see anywhere else. So, while Darwin noticed these patterns, he still didn't really understand what this geographic distribution meant to the overall picture of biodiversity. Okay, so let's take a look at another pattern that Darwin noticed. Darwin noticed that different yet related animal species often occupied different habitats within a local area. Alright, so what does that mean? Simply put, it means that he saw that species varied locally. Here's an example of that variation that Darwin saw uh, in the actual, in the rias that he found in South America. When he first got to South America, along the eastern coastline and along the eastern portions of the continent, over here, he noticed, or he found, the large version of the rhea, uh, and then he was told that there was, in fact, a different species of rhea that was smaller, but it lived in different areas. It lived uh, in the scrubland areas of southern Argentina, uh, as well as uh, in the higher altitudes of some of the mountains, which were completely different uh, ecosystems than the previous rias. And another example of this happening, Darwin noticed when he got to the Galapagos Islands. Uh, he was investigating the tortoises that lived on the islands, uh, and he was told and then observed that different tortoises have different shells from different islands. Here's an example of the tortoise that lives on Isabella Island which is rainy and has abundant vegetation that, just, that is close to the ground. Uh, and you'll notice that the tortoises have these dome-shaped shells um, and relatively short necks. While the tortoises that live on Hood Island have very long necks and a shell that curves up, which allows them to stretch their necks even higher, which accommodates their needs to get at the vegetation that typically is higher in this sparse area. Darwin also noticed that there were distinctly different mockingbirds on the different islands. They all resembled the mockingbirds that he saw in South America, but yet they were still identifiably different. And in addition to the mockingbirds, he also noticed these small brown birds uh, on the islands. All of them seem to have different shaped beaks and originally he didn't consider them to be all that important. But these birds eventually became an important part of his book trying to explain natural selection. And they became known as Darwin's finches. Okay, so the third pattern that Darwin noticed was that some fossils of extinct animals seem to be very similar to living species in the same area. Simply put, this just means that species seemed to vary over time. Darwin noticed this as he was collecting fossils in different parts of the world. Uh, it seemed like quite often he would find fossils of organisms that seemed very similar to the modern-day examples. Here you see an example of one of those fossils that he uh, uncovered, known as glyptodont. Uh, he noticed that it looked very similar to the modern-day armadillo, even though it was quite a bit larger. And he did wonder if somehow, somewhere in the past, 
these two animals could have somehow been related. And the big question was, why had this larger version, the glyptodont, disappeared? Now, Darwin obviously started thinking about these patterns, trying to figure out what they meant while he was sailing back home. And then, after he got back home, he found out that the mockingbirds ended up being three separate species that weren't found anywhere else. And we've already mentioned that those little brown birds turned out to be distinct species of different finches uh, that also were not found anywhere else. In fact, the same was true about most of the animals that were found on the Galapagos Islands. The tortoises, the iguanas, uh, and many of the other specimens that he uh, did in fact find. So the big question that Darwin had was how did these animals get to the Galapagos Islands? Why did they look similar than animals that he saw somewhere else but yet were distinctly different? Well, as you probably already know, uh, he did spend several years researching and trying to put together his ideas in order to explain everything that he saw. And the evidence suggested that species are not fixed and that they could change by some natural process. And it's that natural process that he finally came up with that we know as natural selection.